Well, hi, and welcome to uh, Jim's shop here. A short piece on this uh, 91X Philco radio. I think it's a 91X. A uh, couple things here before I show you something rather curious. Um, first of all, the schematic I've been relying on is not matching the radio, so I've got the wrong schematic here. It's close, but uh, for instance, down here, this, this uh, tone network appears to be connected quite differently than, uh, than how it's shown in the schematic. It's much more, much more simple. And uh, I've repeated again the B-plus measurements to these three tubes. And uh, surprisingly enough, now I'm, I'm finding B-plus. I haven't done anything to justify that. But uh, there's 100 and... what is it here? About 120 volts on this guy and 30 on this one. I don't think 30 is right, but at least there's something there now. Either I blew it when I first made my readings. Um, I was not familiar with the uh, two-pin layout, and uh, it's very hard to see in the back of this radio. And I think I was misidentifying some of the terminals. And, you know, if voltage is missing, there's no clue. If you've got B plus there, well, you can find the B plus that helps you identify pins and stuff like that. So mysteries abound here, but here's the biggest mystery of all. I've removed this coil here. Okay, it's sitting. It's sitting right here. Now that's quite a distance from the radio. It came out of. Can you see that? There's an empty can there. Right in the center of the screen. Here's one with the coil in it. This one's empty. That's where I took the coil out. And this this wire here with a cap on it is a high voltage wire that sets on right now, so I don't want to that's just to make me a little safer there. So the coil is right out. So this this coil um, it takes signal from the IF amplifier, sends it into the detector. I'm sorry, detector rectifier, which I would think is just the detector, and on its way through the amplifier and onwards. So you you know. I'd certainly lay money down that you take this out of this radio and there's no chance of the radio working. But listen. Yeah. <laughs> so I, maybe they never needed that coil the whole time. Should never put it in the radio, perhaps. <laughs> it's just some extra parts maybe uh, they had left over at the factory when they were building the radio. So this is what's really fooled me on this radio. I, I switched it on. I heard it working. It's working poorly, but it's working. And I was thinking this is just a simple job of tune-up. Um, maybe some bias voltage is off on a tube or two, maybe a weak tube, just a, a weak amplifier tube could cause that. And as I proceeded through the radio, if you've been watching the videos, you know I found missing B plus on uh, four tubes, although now it looks more like one tube. I'm not too sure about the 30 volt B plus, it doesn't seem right to me. And yet, and yet the radio is working. Now you got it turned up pretty high, I mean, that's full. Of course, you're not sitting here with me, so that doesn't mean too much to you. But that, that's that's moderately loud. Uh, the quality of sound is terrible, but then these these speakers are shot. You can get a look at. It. I mean, there's a hole right right through here. There's just a hole right through it. Man, it's pretty warm. Hey, that's curious. Okay, the uh, fuel coil is pretty warm here. Radio's been on for about an hour, maybe half an hour. That's a little warmer than I would like. Maybe there's another hint of a, a heavy uh, current flowing somewhere in the B plus or high voltage circuitry, which would not be surprising at all. Any one of these old capacitors could be shot, and uh, any of these resistors could be way out. So. The fact that the radio might be misbehaving a little bit is not too confusing to me, but 
what is going on that a radio can work without this coil? That's my question. Thanks for watching.